listen. Oh, okay, we're ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing a mind lean to feel more like, comfortable. Is it actually working? Yes, it is. I think it is actually working. So it then everyone's watching me saying, is it working? Live on Facebook. Right. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Matt Abbott. Uh, this is the Nims and Fogs Live Wire by Lockdown online premiere event. And these are the wonderful poets. Uh, <laughs> it's like the Brady Bunch, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so, hi, my man, Zer Khan, Kirsty Taylor, Sean Mahoney, Siley Katebe. Uh, so, yeah, how are you all doing? Uh, Kirsty, how are you doing? I'm doing good, mate. I'm all good. Good, good. You got to show us the your hair, the line oh, in your oh, hair. Yeah, Matt's been impressed with my lockdown <laughs> hair. I've got some, uh, what is it, Love Lady it. Clydeburn going on there? I Love <laughs> it. It's buzzing. Um, so, hi, Matt. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm just excited to see what's going to happen tonight. I want to see everyone's poems. I want to see what everyone's been doing. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm really excited for everyone to see it as well. Um, just a disclaimer for people watching on Facebook, if I seem nervous, it's because A, I usually am, and B, I'm just worried that when I share my screen, the whole thing's just going to blow up and crash. But we'll just come back on. Um, Sean, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. <laughs> doing good. Uh, yeah, got my got my tea, got my hot beverage right here. And yeah. um, <laughs> feeling excited, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm really excited to see where, because I know we've all, like, been given a jumping off point and um, I know we've all gone in really different directions so it's cool to see how similar they, they might be as well as how different they might be as well yeah definitely Siley how are you doing I'm doing good you know I'm just <laughs> like <laughs> I'm ex like I'm excited to see what everyone else has been up to and yeah it's just a great chance to share the work and then just see what everyone else has been doing like Sean yeah. said we've all had like different jumping off points and it would just be great to be in a space that in itself is a unifying factor. And then yeah. just seeing what are the unifying factors there are in it. Nicely put. Yeah, like, um, so I was actually chatting to Siley about this project back in February. I had an idea and I sort of could picture it in my head. We were at Verve Poetry Festival. Remember mm. those things? And uh, that was the last physical gig we did, actually, oh. 22nd of February. And um, so I had this idea and then obviously lockdown happened. And then in the summer, I sort of realized that I could do it digitally. So obviously I approached you for, and the, when, it's, it's mad when you've got an idea in your head and it sort of looks good on paper and you think, is it going to work? And then you send it to the arts council and they go, here's some money. And then I pass it on to you guys. And like, honestly, the commissions, fuck, it's they're so good. So beautiful. I'm so proud of you all. Um, thank you. So yeah, I guess, um, I'll start chatting to you one by one. I, it's always awkward if I say, how are you all doing? And you all try and answer at once. That's why I sort of went to you one at a time. Uh, I feel like I'm Bradley Walsh on on, on, on the I chase. Which is... more loose women, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> loose women was a very long time ago. Um, Not on for... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sure, is, you should know this. I, What's wrong? I I made an appearance on Loose Women in 2009. Wow. As a very as a very young boy when I was in a pop band, but fortunately, the interview's not on YouTube. Oh, so it's all right. It's a crime. It's on Summit because I've seen it. It used to be, but Ooh. it got taken down. I think <laughs> possibly <laughs> by <laughs> me. Um, <laughs> nah, anyways, look, I feel like I'm name dropping here. Two minutes into the Zoom, so Sean, you're gonna go first. So tell us about your project or what you okay. what you did. All right, cool. Yeah, um, it was boxing. I I, I kind of wanted to work I, I'm used to working with like young men young uh teenagers and I was like yeah this sounds cool I looked at this point lockdown was kind of uh, the first lockdown was kind of ending this was like yeah summer so I knew gyms were open again and I wanted to work uh in my old gym or with like kids that were basically like find little uh, like teenagers that I would have known back then um and we approached a few gyms but then lockdown came back in again and it was a lot harder to get them on the Zooms. And so we still had a couple of kids on Zoom, which was cool, teenagers on Zoom. Yeah. Uh, but then what we decided to do was like reach out to just anyone that's interested in boxing, that boxes, that's a boxing trainer. And then we had this like really solid group of, uh, of these guys, actually and Fiona as well, but like of these dudes that would just be writing about um, everything. Uh, the, 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 the workshops for me were amazing. I love them so much. Uh, they were very, very intense. I kind of, like, it was a lot of writing involved. Um, we used uh, Joyce Carol Oates and 
old books and interviews and just trying, trying to like basically work on trying to describe uh, the community aspect of boxing. So less about like the, the big fights, but more about like why you go, who's there with you, uh, mm -hmm. and then into writing, and then for fun experiments, like writing about movement and how to like, sometimes when you overwrite movement, it feels slow. So how do you write something concise and accurate uh, while still still being simple? And then when it came down to the, the commission afterwards, I found it so hard. Uh, there's something about this second lockdown it just battered me. This one, I, I would, there'll be days of just not being able to get out of bed. It was it was rough, and I and I went through about four different um, drafts, like completely different ideas. And one was my relationship with trainers, and then another one was about um, interact about how box it, how certain aspects of your life never really leave you once you're part of it. You know that kind of connection to another world that you feel like you're not really in anymore, but you sort of will always carry with you. And then I ended up with this idea, which was, uh, which had me go back to all the workshops that I was running. And I kind of like took the advice of all the workshops and I wrote about my old gym. I wrote about the, the moment when I get home from school to when I go to the gym and when I go home. And I just wrote about that time when I was from about 14 to 16 of just, I mean, I, I trained from like 13 to like 20, but like that period. Um, and I kind of talk about, and just trying to, so I tried to write about how f all the things about movement and writing. And then I worked with uh, Sadie, uh, one of my heroes, one of the most like creative people. Um, she kind of adds like a lightness and uh, like a sense of magic to everything. And I got my, I got a Canon camera and just took pictures of my old gym. I just went around, took pictures, took about 35 pictures with the flash on. And yeah, and then put everything down onto iMovie and got Sadie to illustrate over, over the top. And then I got Gabriel Jones to help. I made most of the soundscape, well, no, no, not most. I made some of the soundscape on my own with uh, the sound of skipping ropes and pads and stuff that I just recorded at the gym. Uh, and then Gabriel being the genius that he is, like added in this like amazing extra stuff that just kind of like lifts it you know what I mean it's like you know you watch a film and you're like oh it's good and then you watch a film and they add the soundtrack and you're like uh, 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 uh. <laughs> like that and that's like the story of it and it's it's we've cut it to the you know I, um it, it's yeah we it we got there in the end <laughs> I think that would say that we got there just in time for today but um yeah I'm I'm, I'm proud of it I'm definitely proud of it yeah Ooh, you should be proud of it <laughs> you should be proud of it it's it's amazing um, it, yeah, it, 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 it was, we did cut it to the wire a little bit, but it doesn't matter because it's, it's ready now. Um, oh, Matt, so, honestly, so I want to say, you, you've been, I, I think everyone's going to say it, but you've been absolutely fantastic. First oh. of all, what you thought of for this blew my mind. Like, uh, like it was, it was an honor to have been thought of, but the opportunity to run these workshops with any community that you choose and then to run, to have a, to have a, a decent, decent commission with any artist to pay them decent money too to have so much freedom is incredible like it, it's it's been fantastic having you be well, part of it, well i'm glad you've enjoyed it i just i just feel like obviously with everything that's happened this year uh like representation is just obviously it's always been important but i just feel like it's been getting more and more important by the day and like with covid enabling us to do these things digitally much as it's been a nightmare. I just feel like you guys being able to link up with these artists digitally, it would have been mad not to try and capitalize on it. Um, so yeah, I just like linking up with the underrepresented communities. I just, yeah, I'm, I'm glad it's all come to come together. Shall I try and share your piece, Sean? Shall I see what happens? Yeah, go for it. Is anybody, is anybody, is any of, are any of you for watching on your phones rather than your laptops? Um... My friend is, so I can ask him if you want to check. Well, basically what I'm saying is, right, if I start sharing this and it's not working, please text me and tell me, because I'll yes. be just sat here like, do, do, do. Yeah, <laughs> cool, yeah. right, I'm going to give it a go. Uh, that makes me sound really unprofessional. I have tested this. Sorry. Uh, so. I might mute it. I don't, the idea of watching it just with me there listening to my own little thing. I might uh, get some. No, I'll watch it, I'll watch it, I'll watch it. I know. I want to share that one. And I want to share, okay, I'm going to go for it. Is that, can you see that? <laughs> yes. Right. Oh, Carl, stop faffing around. Just say what you want to say. I want to 
wanted you to hear this from me before someone else got into your ear. Isabel is having a baby, and I am the father. An episode of Neighbours and Three Minute Noodles. Then you pack the bag, t-shirt wraps, put on big coat, and go. Through the park with the lights off, the benches filled with cautionary tales. Over the fence, middle of the estate, before the door opens, I hear the echo of a blow, followed by the twinkle of a chain. And from the sound alone I know, Jetmere is the first to train. Second floor for Town Hall, Gold's Club on Thursdays. The wraps, gum shields and first aid kit share cupboard space with DVDs of Honey, Save the Last Dance and The Nutty Professor too. Two quid in the tin and no one's counting. 6 p.m. Feels like morning. Give Jetmere a nod and plug the clock in. Jetmere once beat an England prospect so thoroughly the rival Jim tried to get him deported. The floor is in a constant state of slight wobble, as if one tile is missing. You feel a slide when feet twist down. The wall space is filled with laminated back pages from local papers of boys done good, sharing their hall of fame with ringside magazine pullout posters. World champions rubbing shoulders with hometown heroes. Lennox Lewis, MGM Grand, Sean Mahoney, Kentish Town Irish Centre. The back of the rope brushes against my Achilles. Wait till the clock hits zero. Warm up till thoughts and movement become one. The gym fills with bodies. Marlon, Alfie, Taylor, Jamal, Patrick, Simon, Fappa, and TJ, Georgie, Perry. Rope skip in unison. Bags swing and boom. Combinations on pads rattle like firecrackers. Look in the mirror, hold my stance. Keep the elbow in and join the jab. Work on shifting weight on the move. Put advice in practice till the body retains. Push weight down, feel the energy rise up. Twist the foot, turn the hip, launch the punch. Turn the hip, every move builds an incremental distance. Help the stars and present elbow. Outside of boxing, look in the mirror. See, all of my passion for life evaporates under the heat of existence, under the weight of expectation. Here, under these conditions, with this structure, I can build. The condensation fills the gym. Spar with my friends, making me strong by exposing vulnerability. Shots to the belly, knees go, always laughter. Dad's moved out, mum's working late. This is my home today. Sparring partners as siblings, trainers as parents, shouting combos and whispering plaudits. The sound winds down. Two and a half hours of everything I've got, and at the same time, the hip filled up. I changed my t shirt, big coat on. While walking down the stairs, I hear the chain twinkle in time to the sound of the blow. Jet me is back on the bag, and on hearing that I know, while the gym is my home, for Jet me, boxing is life. All right. Cheers. <laughs> oh, oh, that was sick. Thank you. Oh my Let's God. go. Let's go. <laughs> so I'm yeah, yeah. Nice. That's true about Jetme. And but it, the the sad thing is Jetme. Yeah, yeah. Jetme is great though. Uh, um, oh, nice. Wow. That so was, yeah. Sorry. Everything, everything worked. The sound worked. Everything was cool. Yeah, um, definitely. Sean. Cool. <laughs> Oh, jeez, oh, thanks, guys. I yeah. know, but you know them pictures, like, it looked like they could have been taken in 90s or, like, yeah. the photos were wicked and just them sounds, man, like, with your words. Oh, I want I want to listen to that again and again. Yeah. It's, ditto, ditto. It was so cool. It actually looks a lot better th th now than it did when I was 15, I tell you that. Like, <laughs> I was like, look, this is the good stuff right here. Like, some of those pictures, I'm like... Yeah, so they're getting they're getting good rap. There's a video on YouTube of like a, of that gym uh, as like a little like trailer to get people to go, 
oh. and one of the clips is of this like little kid hitting a tire with a crowbar <laughs> it's like oh, Mario. <laughs> they just like there was a lot of, there was a lot of the traveling community was like part of that gym and there was just a lot of like do you want to spa do you want to spa i was like yes. no no not you. Yeah. <laughs> you do you still box sean no 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 i don't box anymore um yeah no no i haven't got the love well i love boxing but i don't have the love to box mm. Mm. anymore yeah, 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 it was great. I uh, yeah, it was it was great seeing that come to light. And I actually went to the boxing studio, mm. uh, boxing gym when Sean had the photos taken, socially mm. distanced, obviously. Um, and it was amazing to see that community and sort of see Sean in his previous element slash oh. semi current element. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, it was cool. Was it? So that was Gabriel Jones helping you with the soundscape, and Sadie St. Mm. Hilaire uh, uh, illustrated the photographs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I love the, that looks yeah. so good. Like that, yeah. yeah that really absolutely cool. smashed that, bro. Like absolutely oh, smashed you. that. Oh man! All right, all right, I'm getting too, I'm getting too shy. Like, Grab yourself a lot. You earned your yeah. lot tonight. <laughs> cool. I'll get a little. I'll get a little. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Nice one, Sean. Cheers, dude. Right, Sile, <laughs> you're next in the spotlight. Hey, um, after that, after that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so, do you want to tell us about your project? Yes, yes. Uh, so for me, I was running some workshops under the banner of Finding Your Voice. Um, and that's working with underrepresented um, communities, preferably of color. So for me, I found the poetry space late in life. And it was after, like, I, I tried university in Birmingham for like a year or two, but it wasn't for me. And I wanted to create. And when I came back home, they weren't uh, easily accessible for me, spaces where I could create, write and share. And I just decided, and I said that to myself, that if I was ever in a position where I can offer anything to be part of that conversation, I'll do it. And I'm very grateful, Matt, that you, like along the journey, I've had contact with great mentors, great teachers and great opportunities to share this. And this is definitely, one of those moments that allowed me to be in spaces where I can share and have those conversations and just encourage the narrative. So because representation is very important. Um, when as, as things were bubbling on and we're doing it digitally, it really encouraged me uh, to investigate my relation and my connection to those communities. So even as we were going along, I was like, yeah, you know what, uh, the fact that most of my practice has been based in like Bath, Bristol, because that's where there's a cultural hub. And I was like, I was thinking a lot more about how am I connecting with not only the people who know that there's the art scene, uh, but those voices, because before I found the arts, I wasn't in those spaces, but they existed alongside. Um, and so we put a call out um, and had some great conversations. And all the most of what I did was sharing tools that I like I use in my practice to create work from the ordinary, but being able to remix it and twist it out to the side. Because uh, one of my favorite pieces and one of my favorite approaches is like convoluted drivel. And just giving ownership that, you know, if you create work, you're the author, you get to decide what's valid and what's not. And I really take pride in that. And it's something that I really enjoy. So whenever I'm in a space where I can do that, it's magic. And everybody who turned up to the workshops was willing to go along with that. And it was magic. The conversations were beautiful. And the collaboration was like an interdisciplinary one. And I've worked with Deep Raj Singh before. And I know we work really well together as creatives. He's a professional move, uh, movement artist. And so what we did is when we got into the studio, uh, like with huge support from Matt, we were able to get ourselves into Wildcat Studios in Bristol. And the first day I was like, okay, we had a, like I've had these sick workshops. These are the great points that popped up. And then essentially um, what Deepraj led me through is like giving the, uh, the stimulus from the workshops. He was then guiding me through finding my physical voice. So like then I had to, so I was like, okay, we came up with like five, six, like main titles or themes that we're going to play with. And then we both went off to separate corners of the room, made up like physical gestures that represent that. And then we came together 
put it together and then like after like every session we'd record it i'd go like i'd go home look at the footage think about those conversations tap away tap away tap away next time we working again he's getting me out of my body because you know i got that lockdown weight now and like i haven't moved in a long time but as soon as we moved into the space like it was perfect we like we forgot that you know what whatever your limits were we'd negotiate that nicely and then we just kept investigating the subject and it grew and it grew and it grew and one of the things that really stood out when finding your voice is one of the exercises which includes this is picking a word from the world and like literally elbowing your way into it and taking ownership of it and so we were looking at our relationship to language um is something that it definitely came up is that who told us that this word means this and how much room is there for us to elbow our way into it and so um he is um he is a, a young male as well and so um we were both underrepresented voices and presences and we were looking at how what like the language that has been passed to us the language that we move with affects how we like navigate into the world so it was like how much of the language that we're given are we remixing like investigating stories narrative and that ownership of it and also giving that credit to uh, what's been passed down to us societally familiarly and yeah and recording it was fun we had Dan Martin who is and, and like he like he studied alongside Deep Rice Singh uh when they were when they were learning the craft so when he was in the space it was like, it was tough to find like filming locations but when we found the space i had the perfect team around me there was mac giving like 100 10000 support we had deeps who me and him were invested from the word go cuz whenever we get to work with each other we just like all right how are we going to do this and we just like navigating all the rabbit holes and when dan came in the chemistry was ace so we were just it was cold it was raining but within 5 minutes we forgot we forgot because every time someone does something deep to do something and everyone goes ooh yes more of that and like dan would like flick the camera set and we were like ooh and yeah we had like crisps we had water we had juice and we had good vibes and so uh when we turned this in i saw what dan handed there and i was just like i couldn't have asked for a better overall team to do this and i really hope that my portion of it was able to do justice to and it just reminded me that there's so many ways that you didn't know that you're able to produce like just because you don't know the whole dictionary doesn't mean that there isn't a word or an avenue of it that you can just take ownership in that moment and be like this is us right now and it was just about like three kids out in the cold in the rain just being like we could have been in so many different spaces but we're going to own this right now and the vibe yeah. is just nuts so i'm excited to yeah like hopefully uh or you enjoy seeing this as much as we enjoyed making it yeah Yeah, I know I'm sure I'm sure they will. And um the we had at the last minute we added because it was a movement piece, we added a last a last minute we added a bit of music which is by oh, David. Yes. It's David by an artist Gledhill. called David Gledhill and a track's called Petrichor, but um that was sort of added in sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't and because this is a movement piece it just sort of well, you'll see. I'm going <laughs> to share my screen again now and yeah. I'll mute myself because I know how I get when I watch this. <laughs>
our fathers and their fathers flow through us. We carry their likeness in our bodies, lullabies and lost stories. All estuary and flood, water and blood, these are our family trees. These waterways are the ancestral cartographers who help plot a path into new pastures. We listen as they speak. Saying that the meek shall inherit the work of old rivers, shepherding water from the well to open sea through a splintering network of language. Legacy is a rudderless rowboat wrestling time and everything it took to uncover the ghosts that crowd our gullets, fruit from forgotten seeds. Our throats are thick with the silent letters that make our names. And we sound every syllable of inheritance with gusto, knowing nobody stuttered who didn't drown in this profession, navigating the blotted banks of allegory for the spectators, mispronouncing the current, trying to learn our hymns and tides. We are the sons who threw all the ugly into our limbs to tread water, fighting the current to fit into forgotten words. Pretty doesn't fit too well in these floods. There is a word for paddling through flood water I never had the chance to learn. Yo, wow, 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 wow. Oh, my oh, wow. oh my god. That know. was insane. Yeah. Oh ah, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, oh, that was so beautiful. Beautiful now. <laughs> Like, like I, I keep watching it every time. And for me, every time I watch, I'm just thinking about like every conversation that happened to lead us there, like all those moments, all those. And yeah, it's, I'm so glad that, yeah, it, it, that it, I'm able to share that and share the product of all those conversations and the process with everyone is, yeah, there's nothing like it. Oh man, that was so powerful. Like, I feel like the, what, whatever you were experiencing, when the way you were describing it, when you were talking about the beginning, and like, I, could, I don't really know what you're talking about. And then when I saw it, and I, I felt like I felt it, like I felt like my heart really racing. And I, felt, I was like, what is going on? That was insane. Yeah, I think that movement aspect of it, like, I couldn't take my eyes off yet. Like, yeah. I, I want to share that with everybody as well. Mm. Uh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're able to feel that. It's that thing of like the the move that it was like. It's like you got. It's in between of like trying to let something go, but also trying to hold something. And that's it. Felt like that's what was going on throughout it. Like you're looking at your mm -hmm. leave, but then you're like pulling things back down, and then you're talking about what you inherit from your parents. And it's like things you want to get rid of, and, and it, it. There's mm -hmm. so much uh, nuance in the movement as well as the words. It's incredible. Mm. Yeah. yeah and like as essentially what we ended up with was like the same poem and it's like you were given the same prompts like this is the poem that you're going to write these are the five elements or scenes that you're going to create and I was like do the movement do the words and then just like when it all came together when we put it together we're just seeing how those two sit next to each other and yeah it was like I think that the whole team so much like from Matt to being able to use Glen Hill's music and then Dan coming in deeps and yeah it's like I've, I've been spoiled in terms of the people I've been able to work with through this process. Mate, you put it all together man to be fair like you, you you got deeps involved you got Dan involved you know you it's yeah it's been real um yeah, seeing that. Like, because I've seen you do stuff before, movement stuff before at Razor Bar. So when yeah. Noose and Fugs did their tour, uh, we did Razor Bar in Bristol. Obviously, you were co-hosting it, but you did a movement piece on stage, and I was just absolutely blown away. So that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do this project was because of seeing that. And I was like, okay, mm. what? 
because for me, like the whole thing about the label has been trying to bring people to poetry who might not necessarily give poetry a go, right? And so now I'm sort of showing if if you merge poetry with photography, animators, movement, illustration, music, whatever, just showing what you can do, what poetry is capable of, you know. And, uh, and I think these pieces, yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah, and I think like that is an amazing part of it because I remember that was like I think the first time me and you had like a proper conversation, um, and yeah, it was me and Tim Lowe who were doing something, who were who pre presenting a piece that we'd worked on together as well. Um, the workshops as well were a great way to, that's why I really loved the workshops, because then they were engaging uh, a community that wouldn't necessarily be in that space. And it was like the piece has been created based on something that the community has been engaged in. So it's like, we get to see what we've been talking about in a space. Yeah. So you don't you, like even if you don't turn up for spoken word, you turn up, you can turn up for spoken word, you can turn up for art, you can turn up for photography, for dance, but then you also turn up to something that like, okay, we've all been talking about and we've all deemed relevant in some way. Yeah. Really love Good. that. Thank you so much. Thank you, mate. Good. Um, all right, Kirsty Taylor. Oh, I'm still gassing off these two, man. Like. <laughs> I feel like I've been to theatre or something, you know, when you properly feel it, like, it's so nice yeah. to feel like you've keep both of you have communicated that through a screen, like, bloody hell. Oh, take a breath. <laughs> so I, I've known you the longest, haven't I, Taylor? We first did a yeah. gig together in January 2013, would you believe? Wow. At the Red Shed in Wakey. Yeah. 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 And I was blown away by you that night. I thought you were amazing, and I always have been ever since. So I'm really pleased that you've, you've joined the label and that we're working together. Um, yeah, yeah tell us, thanks for tell us about yours. Like. Right, so, yeah, so I chose to work with uh, like care experience young people. So uh, for people who don't know, it's like any young person, usually aged between like 16 and 25, who've had experience of um, like growing up in care, could be foster care, residential. We've got a lot of young people in Bradford who've uh, moved to Bradford because they've been displaced by war or they might have even been trafficked uh, from different countries. Uh, so there's a massive community of young people uh, and usually when they get to 16 or 18 uh, they have to leave that care setting. Uh, they don't really say care leavers anymore because you shouldn't ever leave care should you like you should always be cared for. So we say like care experienced but yeah they're kind of like sent out into the world uh, to live uh, which is hard enough when you're uh, 18 or young anyway but especially when you've had a lot of these challenges and difficulties growing up um, so yeah, so I just feel really passionately about these young people. I used to work in a residential home for quite a lot of years um, and it's where like a lot of my uh, learning took place. Like I've worked with young people like since forever, uh, being a teacher and stuff. So I just feel uh, really passionate about these young people. And I think unless you like work as a social worker or work in a residential or you've kind of got a care experience yourself, like a lot of people don't know these kids exist and don't know some of the like the barriers that exist like the kind of lifestyle and challenges um that they face and it is really common and you know years like this make it even more common and more kids going into care so yes yeah, so i were really passionate to to work with this group and um we couldn't really do the workshops online because uh, access to internet is a bit of a problem just financially and just yeah safeguarding and stuff like that so we decided to do the workshops in person which I were dying to do after this year because like I've not been in a room with kids for so long so I was just so buzzing that we could make that happen and Socially yeah distanced. distance workshops socially yeah. distance just, just yeah. To... yeah completely yeah. um so yeah so we had a couple of sessions in real life which were ace um in the first one, I had this lad who was just like rapping at me the whole time. I'd, I was just putting old school grime, like rough squad on, and he's just barring to me, like freestyling off the top. Um, and we ended up writing some really good stuff together. And then um, in another session, I had a group of girls. I actually recognised a lot of the kids from, I run like the Care Leavers Christmas dinner in Bradford. Um, and a lot of them had come the year before, so it was nice that we actually had that uh, vibe anyway. Um, and, and the kids actually didn't know what they were coming to. They just got kind of told by the worker half an hour before and turned up to this session. Uh, and luckily they recognised me and we had a really good time. And then, yeah, the, the lassies actually wrote a group poem. 
and um Bradford's going for city of culture at the minute so the, uh, where we ran the sessions like the director of this big Bradford bid was in the building so we got him in uh, at a distance to come and listen to the girls poems and the girls performed it to him which were which were sick and yeah the kids were just so open man like they just they're full of stories they've seen too much and they were just proper like heart on the sleeves like it were really easy to navigate some of you know like helping them get some of their stories and words down because they're they're full of it and yeah they were just it were interesting for me because I usually worked with these kids when they were a lot younger so seeing them now like aged like some of them were like 18 19 um it's just interesting seeing that pathway that like you know like I used to look after that age um those kids when they were like 11 to 16 but yeah it's just it's just really sad and yeah it's I just still feel really passionate about it and I feel like we need to do more to be supporting and knowing about and and taking like responsibility for these kids in community really so yeah it was a real honour to to write about them and but same as Sean I really struggled when it came to the writing bit even though the workshops were ace and I was just like buzzing for days I found it really hard of like how to pitch the poem because it's such a sensitive topic and like the kids told me so much and I've worked in that area and worked with them kids for years I know like loads of stories but I'm not care experienced so I like who am I to tell this story and I kept questioning that and I don't you know I don't want people to feel sorry for like these kids I don't want like that sympathy so I came back and forth with like how am I gonna tell this these experiences of these kids and I, I think I kind of went back to like my role as a worker and like there's some amazing like workers out there and social workers because another angle could have been like slagging off the system because the system is fucked and the system don't benefit like these kids and but I, I didn't want to do that because there's so many amazing social workers who go above and beyond and so yeah so I ended up I don't know you see what I came up with but um it, it, it was from the heart anyway yeah it really well absolutely and for your commission you worked with souls a music producer slash songwriter yeah. and uh yeah it's just a beautiful piece i've always, you've always had such a musical delivery so it seemed like an obvious fit to do like a musical collaboration yeah do you know that um, beat like when you sent me that beat like i loved that beat but i actually really struggled to that like it made me want to like rap i felt like slim shit <laughs> really like and i was just like I, I needed to take that away to get like I don't know I just thought I'd be more natural at working with a beat but I didn't but then Gledel just put like managed to just slot my words perfectly into that beat so he just did he did the hard work basically well whatever you did mate you nailed it so I am gonna try again now and share screen okay and uh it should work it worked the other two times didn't it let's have a bunch of Glad with them Aldi bags weighted with everything you own, loaded in fingertips as you Google your dad's name to find out you have no but an hand poked feather into skin. Heavy is the chair that ain't supposed to be lifted above your head, eyes and ears pressed to the glass, crossed mesh wires that could, will cut you up forever when your fist tells us to open that fucking door. We can't. But we clean the bath and try and make it nice for you, don't get in. Your social worker can't answer right now, so it's a big kick-off. We mean crisis, crying, crush. You hide budgies in Easter egg boxes, a crow in your wardrobe, a friend on your shoulder, a secret in the bus stop, a sick at the bus stop, a fuck off at the bus stop. Fake babies, faces and favours and a pram on a doorstep and a Range Rover at the curb. Tinted windows and a cracked out smile, five quid for the barbers and a bite on your neck. Broken blackberries and bank pocket money, twos off staff, young lass, go sit. Double decker bus eyes look into your bedrooms, but nobody knows you are here. Go safe. 
We say at the ends of shifts where night times drift into locked fridges, doors and unlocked nightmares. And half an hour longer and one last sick and who's on tonight? And your bedroom light is kept on till morning. Because the darkness knows you well. It brought you up, didn't it? When you had no one. You sat on its knee, tucked your toes underneath, whispered in its ear before you'd sleep, waiting for it to catch the tears from your cheeks. Can I just say, you know you lot, yeah, you are not weak. How can you be when your own spirit has been mum, has been dad and has taught you how to be? So your bedroom light is still on, but the teachers are scared of you. You are a blazing light, a raging fight, crazy right? You can't put the extinguisher down because you've been fighting fires all your life. So we prize it from your fingers and bleeding knuckles and try listen and guess what you might need. Wipe tears away with heavy sleeves, day to breathe, day to breathe. A day to breathe. Go sit. Your whole life is lived on bread lines, last crust and crumbs of houses, no gardens, just sheds and shells of an home. Bags up a state playground is all you've ever known. Two striped trainers, no socks, playing out in big brothers, bobble, tracksuit tops, with nobody calling you in. Go say, you'll come back when you're ready, when it's time to cool down on line up floors, watch washing machines like tellies, and listen to your mum get battered before carving your name into book bed frames and lines into your eyebrows and cuts into your skin. Bitten nails, sore thumbs, scabby elbow, homegrown DIY haircut and me down kits. The lamppost lights your bedroom, fills your head, but you feel empty as you wait for the bad time stories of which there have been plenty. We help you pack your bags, but you're the only one who can carry them. Now you are forced to make your own space, keep your sense safe. Do you feel ready for the world? Do you feel enough? Did the caravan holidays make you feel loved? Do you know that love is the antidote to tough, not the opposite? So you can be both, and you are. Go safe. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Woohoo! Sorry, sorry, but I'm muted too soon. <laughs> ah, all the feels. All the feels. Oh, all the feels. Go safe. Ah. So dense. Ah. So much writing. That was incredible. Oh, thank you. And the images were potent. Images were potent. I feel like it was really honest as well, like considering what you said, how you felt writing it. I feel like I just fully got across. Like it was so, it was kind of devastatingly honest. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah. there's that thing like when you work, I've, I, I, I'm i not like, I've worked with enough young people and enough people that have been like in the naughty section of school, the naughty thing, the this, that, this, that where all you really want them to do is to see outside themselves and see their potential. And you just want to be like, can't you see how like great you are? And, you, they, and that, that like that, what you wrote really encapsulates that. That thing of like, I'm trying to tell you that like none of this defines you and like you're so much stronger for it. And you really get that like sense of like wanting to reach out to them. And it also, you gave so many, um, so many like, uh, it felt almost like I've been reading Russian fairy tales and it kind of reminds me of these things like these like brutal glimpses into like life for like just one line and then you give something really abstract to like the darkness it's all about sitting on its knee and like you just kept it moving all the time and it felt it felt almost like one of those old folk tales of just like do this do that and not almost like a traveler that's just like trying to yeah go safe oh, incredible you. loved it mm. It's um, because uh, obviously I've added subtitles to all of the videos, and so like you can listen to a poem a few times, but when you're adding subtitles to it, you really and honestly, I've been in bits after adding subtitles to all of these. <laughs> so they're so so powerful, so beautiful, and um, it was really great of John to let us use that picture as well to yeah, marry up with John the Martin. such a good yeah. good photographer, yeah. Yeah, I've been checking out his stuff. I, I I must admit I didn't know John's work before, but I've been checking it out. It's phenomenal. Yeah. So. 
it's good. That's and another... actually, if we do like a proper video, it'd actually be good to yeah some of his photos and that because he's yeah yeah. Well, like the way Sean used them photos were stunning. Yeah, so that, like yeah, that's proper inspired me. That I wish like. Yeah, I wish I'd have done Very something good. like that. <laughs> I wish I did something like yours. <laughs> Bloody hell. I wish I'd have yeah. done man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I, no, I don't. They're so, <laughs> yeah, they're so different, aren't they, these? But I just love them. I love them all. Um, so, uh, Sahima, uh, do you want to tell us about yours? Yeah, I felt emotionally exhausted. <laughs> it's taken me through so much this evening. Um, yeah, wow. It's also amazing, Matt, like, just to see what's come out of this project. Because obviously I'd only seen what I've done and what I've been working on. And I think the variety and the, like, just in every sense of that word, like, I feel, um, yeah, this is like an epic project. And I agree with everyone as well. Like, thank you for, I think it's so rare to have the opportunity to, as you say, just work with, like, anybody you want to. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, so with with the one that I did, so... I guess like the time that we you approached me and we were talking about this um, was like the thing that was big on my mind at that time was those those awful videos of like journalists in these like boats on the sea and like kind of reaching over their mics to people seeking asylum in the UK being like oh how is it over there and you know it was just like really, this really like dystopian thing I guess to see um, and so I kind of was like oh it'd be amazing to work with um, anybody who's you know. Um, experienced or experiencing seeking asylum in this country um, and it was kind of tough obviously to, to find people um, cause just because of like the nature of that but luckily I, I do have some connections with um, some organizations in Leeds um, that like do work with um, people seeking asylum and um, we tried to like get people through those avenues and try to just like you know figure out what people needed because obviously the other thing is you know get like your, your level of English you might not feel super comfortable or confident with and um you know I wanted to make sure the workshops weren't going to be like you know re-traumatizing anybody or making people kind of live through stuff you don't want to live through um and it was really insane in the end like um one of the workshops there was there was like two people from France in them and they were just like yeah here I am in France and I was like I don't know how you like where did you hear about this but I think it was through the networks um of like wherever we sent stuff um and like shout out to Matt for like just continuously helping us send out stuff because <laughs> we were just like we can do but yeah it was really um I took the workshops like I just felt really honored um by the kind of time that people gave me and the and the and the work that they were willing to share with me I guess because I think even as much as you you don't obviously you don't provide prompts that are going to make people have to like re-experience trauma you know I think the trauma of <laughs> seeking asylum is is gonna is, is replete in, in everything isn't it so um one of the the people who attended actually he is a writer himself and he um raps and it was like oh it was insane because you know you don't know what someone's going to deliver right so he was like oh I've got this um piece called a postcard to Elizabeth and I was like oh like Queen Elizabeth and he was like yeah and I was like okay yeah great like go for it and it was so like harrowing and witty and fierce and yeah I was just like honestly I, I was just like you teach me like you just please just help me like facilitate my writing guys um but yeah it was really intense and I think the thing that obviously re probably stuck out to me the most was just I think the fact that we're in this digital space because it was online right but like I guess it was beautiful that I could connect with these people that I would never get to meet um, necessarily, but also it was just kind of devastating that like here I am safe with my passport and my citizenship in my little house and there's people in this workshop who, I mean the most devastating was you know this guy who's who lost his wife in the Mediterranean like their, their boat drowned and it's I couldn't even I didn't know, I was just like, I don't really can't compute, I still can't really compute that, that I'm like, here we are sharing this space. And does I don't understand why, you know, why you can't be here. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, anyway, so yeah, they were really, yeah, it was just an honor for me, I think, to be able to share the space with the people who came. And um, in the end, we, yeah, I think like we're still in communication about some of their poems and we're gonna try and like subtitle some of them, like Matt's helping um, with that and, and kind of just like, you know let them share them how they want to um so in the terms of like writing the poem i, I guess similar to, to um kirsty i was like well this is not my experience this is not like um i don't want to speak on behalf of anybody i also don't really want to like 
you know, exoticize or kind of sensationalize experiences or whatever. I think there's just so many ways in which you can, can do it badly, I guess. Um, but I, I, so, so because of that, I tried to focus on like, I guess my, my complicity, like what does it mean to be part of this, this territorial space that is so complicit in death, in violence, and you don't want to be, you don't, you, you know, you deplore it and you, you want to divest from it, but here you are with your little red passport. Um, so that's what I was thinking about. And I guess I also just thought, I think that image of like the, the Mediterranean being like a graveyard, right? Like these, these, this ocean being, um, yeah, just like a, a ground that nobody really had to go to process those burials. So that was a sort of a big, big image, but I also thought about using like it, Britain as on, also a metaphor and, um, you know, like sea monsters kind of like, I don't know, there's just all this, I, I think I found it easier to, to kind of think through an analogy because it was such a heavy topic as well. Um, so that sort of, that was my thoughts. And I really wanted to work with Arla, who is an amazing illustrator um, and artist. And I basically I love, she, so she does a lot of art and she'll share it in like a time-lapse format, um, kind of on her Instagram and stuff. And I, I don't know, personally, I love that stuff because it's just so therapeutic to like watch somebody and you see something emerge. So we had a lot of conversations about like, you know, I was like, I don't really know. I, I, I was giving such awful ideas. That's me with visual art. I was like, why don't you draw this? And then you could have this here. And she was just like, okay, well, uh, we'll see. And she, what she did was like beyond what I could have, you know, thought or planned. Um, and I think, I just think it's so powerful and beautiful what what um what she's done with with um the words and like yeah I don't want to say too much about it because I think you'll see but um yeah it was a huge huge honor to work with her and um yeah I think that was that was the experience for me Matt <laughs> yeah it, I, it was it, it was really incredible to see it all come together like on, obviously on all four projects and like you say at first it was it was difficult with the workshops because you know people if, who are maybe seeking asylum might not be scrolling through Twitter looking for a workshop but I'm so glad that we did connect with those people and like you say the fact that there were people in France and yeah. it just um, it was something that would not have happened without Covid which is at least we're finding positives yeah. along, along the way. Um, yeah. yeah no this is a stunning piece um, it really is beautiful um, so I shall give it a go I reckon the channel is a graveyard the mediterranean is a cemetery the beaches are barbed wire the sand castles are detention centers the living are almost the dead but the dead are merely tragedies tragedy a death that occurs untimely unannounced accidental no cause no perpetrator no one to be held account our prayers and thoughts are with the deceased every time a baby's body is found. This is the slogan of an island of sirens that make shipwrecks out of refugees, make refugees out of names they decided are too difficult to pronounce, decide it's too difficult to name the consequence of the legacy of their actions, making myth out of the past, paperwork out of people. Our prayers and thoughts are with the deceased, is the slogan of an island of sirens that has sung deceptive songs for centuries. Britannia rule the waves, sung into a seashell that does nothing but roll the noise back and forth, round and round. Rule the waves, rule the waves, rule the waves, waves that choke, waves that bury, waves that submerge, boats that upturn, boats that flood bodies, bodies that flood shores. Our prayers and thoughts are with the deceased. The channel is a graveyard, the Mediterranean is a cemetery, the beaches are barbed wire, the sand castles are detention centres and Britain is an island of sirens. Singing centuries of songs that taunt from behind the ocean spray, a folklore of superiority, never mentioning that the travellers were tyrants, the sailors were soldiers, the merchants were miners, the administration was a racket of wealth now limited to only those inside its shores, out of reach of the children of the ghostly hands that made it. Our prayers and thoughts are with the deceased. According to some sources, sirens were also cannibals, atop islands surrounded by carcasses of their own consumption, corpses with the last drop of life squeezed out in order to pump into theirs, a circulatory system of extraction from the compost heap of history. They salivate at the stench, truly a tragedy they implore, it must stop, our prayers and thoughts are with the deceased. 
while the beaches are made into barbed wire. Whilst the whole people are made into empty shells, sandcastles are turned into privately owned prisons, piranha-like frenzied feeding off the catchings in their nets. If the waves do not claim you for the ocean crypt, the corporate fortress will. The barricade on every street, in every workplace, on every housing contract will. This island is both tomb and tomb raider, sucking every last bit from the bones, then throwing them over its gate-kept shoulders on chartered flights, in chains and fetters, and through secret letters. But our prayers and thoughts are with the deceased. The channel is a graveyard. The Mediterranean is a cemetery, the beaches are barbed wire, the sandcastles are detention centres, the living are almost the dead, but the dead are not merely tragedies. For there are no tragedies under tyranny, and there is nothing natural about this island, because even as deep as a trench has been dug into the sand, it can still be washed away, and even as tight as the barbed wire is coiled into the ground, it can still be uprooted. Even a life jacket filled with lead cannot take you to the ocean floor if somebody on the land holds onto your hand. The dreams of the dead are not drowned when they are, and the multitude of people holding hands is its own type of sea, that surely, when on an island of sirens who sing their own praises from atop a pile of carcasses, have the power to sink it to the ocean floor. That was hypnotizing and mesmerizing. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and like the words were powerful. And like the way it synced up with the artwork, it's like one of my like two of my favorite bits where when the barbed wire came up and the barbed wire left. Yeah. Because you're so like you're in it. You're you're leading us through the story. The art is going across, and then the mention of barbed wire and your peripheral this flicker, and barbed wire clears up. And then as everything like when we get to that turn, the barbed wire goes off, and then the hands. That is. That was all Allah, man. That's so clever. I was the same. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yo, your words is not lost. Yeah, yeah. No, you took us on a whole journey. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You capture like that political like so well, like it, it were personal and like especially the bit at the end where people's names came up, it felt like it just felt so universal as well, like wow. Was, yeah, those five names at the end were the family of five um Kurdish Iranians who drowned only a few weeks ago. Um I think oh. that really stood out because it was just like you know, it's just a whole family, isn't it? But yeah, yeah I think Arla gave it so much life in that way and I, yeah, I really appreciate the comments. And um, like, it was, thank you. Sorry, sorry. Go oh, for sure. Uh, no, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Tyler, you go first. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, no, I just want to say, like, thank you for taking us on such a journey because, like, that is, like, I wouldn't, like, I'm not in a lot of positions to, like, I think uh, that those stories and that information comes into my life, uh, it, like, usually through like a news stream or when it comes that way. And it was really powerful. I really appreciated the way that you guided us through that narrative in that world. Like powerful. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. No, thank you. That, that means a lot. Yeah, it was, um, there, there was so much wording in it, so much writing in it that was so clinical, but it also felt so uh, emotionally driven as well, especially towards the end. It almost felt like, you had to tell it to yourself as much as you had to tell it to us, you know, just to like keep going. And it kind of felt like it went from this thing where the right, like it was such a perfect marriage between the, the, the writer and the artist, because like at first it feels like you're, you, you never knew who was leading who, hmm. you know? And it, cause like when, when like the, the yeah, the, the, the chain comes down and the feet come up or the footprints come up, but then the monsters get swiped away and you never really tell like who's, if you're going off what they've drawn or if they're going what you've drawn. And that really just like shows how amazing that like 
partnership was. Oh, uh, and it was it was very really good. It was really fucking good. Thank Sorry, you. Yeah. No, I should just say that Arlo like spent hours like editing so it matched up because she yeah, I don't know how she does it, but um yeah man, I think it definitely paid off. So it's cool. It was, to like, even to your words, like there were certain bits, especially when there was that like the way that like thing that was growing and growing and growing, and it's the way you words were going and the script was going. I was like, Yeah, this is perfectly in sync, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to share, like I just can't wait to share. Like there's so many people that need to see that. Like, thank you. Oh, well. No, so I'm feel the same about all yours. I'm like, this Matt, you you must feel so charged right now. <laughs> Honestly, I can't. I like obviously, I I chose I chose you four for a reason. Like, but I'm just blown away. Like, they're so beautiful. They're such beautiful pieces. I'm so proud to have been involved in it. Um, obviously, the YouTube videos will be live pretty much straight after this, and then the singles are out tomorrow on Bandcamp, uh, and they'll be on Spotify and all that in the new year but i just wanted a period where it was only on band camp just because my like, mum wants to know if it's going to be on apple music because yes just... it will it'll be on apple music and spotify <laughs> and all that from the first of jan it's just that like apple and spotify are evil bastards so i wanted <laughs> it to be on band camp <laughs> just for a bit band camp. Um, <laughs> we got band camp. Uh, yeah so well they were the four commissions thank you so much for giving up your time tonight to share those and uh, for all your hard work on it um, Thank you. and for everyone and watching for pushing us and uh, supporting us and yeah so, yeah. Yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you a lot on it. Yeah. yeah. We're honored to be part of this. Like thank you, Kirsty, Sahima, Saidi, like like yeah. I, I feel really ch I'm very humbled as well, to be honest with you. Like the work you've all done is like kind of make me want to like do some writing right now. You know yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as soon as I let go of just like yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel and like every time. Every time I heard one of your poems, it knocked me back. A month was like, I can't write. I can't write after hearing <laughs> that. I'm like, shit. It knocked me back again. I'm like, no. But now, um, no, you should check out Matt's poem. You should plug that one that you did today, Matt, for that human rights thing, because your poem is so sick and that video is so, yeah. I, I will do it at some point, but obviously I wanted to share these more. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? And also, like, obviously there's you four, and then we've got, like, you know, Luke Wright, Selena Godden, Tori Garbutt, Kevin P. Gilday, Louise Fazakli as well. So you're all part of a family now. Um, yes. Are you yeah. the dad? Uncle? Sort of. I don't know. I don't really know what I am. I'm just a person who likes spreadsheets. Um, right. I'm going to stop broadcasting on Facebook in a minute, but stay on the call so I can say bye to you. Um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Give this a share. If you're watching afterwards, the singles are live now. So thank you for all Bye. of your love. Um, you're the best. Bye. Bye. Bye.